Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. So glad to have everyone back uh, this Wednesday night for Midweek Man. So glad that we're here with you all. Um, I'm getting situated here. So glad to be here uh, with you all tonight. Welcome back to Change Christian Center. It like it's been forever since we've been together. It's only been, what, a, a week? But like it's been a long time uh, since we've been together. So I'm so glad that you are here. I'm so glad that uh, I am here. But most of all, I'm glad that the Lord is here tonight. And that, you know, he, he blesses our time together for the word and getting to know one another and talking about the word and learning how to live the word is always a, a pleasure uh, to be in the presence of the Lord. And so we're happy about that. I want to tell you that uh, on behalf of my wife, you know, she, uh, uh, her family, you know, lost her mother. And so we had to, uh, things we had to do to take care of that. And then, you know, so she wants to let everyone to know that she really appreciate all the prayers and everything. Uh, whatever it is that you did, there's no big thing or no small thing. She just wants you to know that she appreciate it. And I want to let you know that I appreciate it as well. So thank you for the prayers. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for uh, the words of encouragement, the texts, the calls, the letters, the cards. Um, you know, in time of crisis, you know who your true friends are. And so you guys are true friends. So we really, really appreciate that. Again, uh, that was just administrative notes. Uh, again, welcome to Change Christian. Welcome back. And uh, we're excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight. And we have a very, very um, uh, good topic tonight that I want to talk about. I feel like the Lord has given it to me. And uh, so I want to share it with you. And uh, let's all work together to try to not only hear the word, but to be doers of the word. You know, uh, it's one thing to hear, but it's another thing to do it. So we don't only want to be hearers of the word. We want to be doers of the word. So with that being said, we're going to pray and then we're going to get into the word. I won't hold you long tonight. I uh, like this thought that I feel like God has given to me. I want to share with you. Lord, we do bless you tonight. We bless you for an opportunity, God, to come back together. To share your word, God, and to learn your word, to how we can become not only hearers, but doers of your word. Lord, we thank you for your protection, God, in the last week or so, God. Whatever it is that we did, we went out of town, or God, we was with families, or we stayed home, whatever we did, God, we thank you for your protection. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your favor. And God, as we come together to share your word tonight, I pray, God, that you will search us, search our hearts, oh God, and our minds, our very intent. Lord, if there's anything that's not right, anything that's not pleasing to you, God, we ask you to forgive us right now, God. We thank you for Calvary. We thank you for the blood, God. We thank you that it still cleanses, oh God. So cleanse us tonight. Make us whole in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Good evening to you all, too. Uh, so let's get into the word tonight. <clears throat> So I want to read out of the book of 1 Peter 5 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Um, well, actually I'm going to read verse 6 and 7. So 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 6 and 7. And the Bible says this. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7 said, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you casting all your care upon him for he careth for you so tonight i want to talk uh, on this topic casting your cares casting your cares all right so i don't know about you but when i read this this particular scripture and i you know in my prayers i'm just reading the scripture and i visualize what is being said I see myself, you know, praying or I see myself, you know, 
the way my mind interprets it in the presence of the Lord. And I, when I'm going into the presence of the Lord, I have my cares and I, I see myself I'm laying or placing my burdens and my cares and my worries at his feet. And then, you know, I'm praying and I'm walking away. And I know that's a simplified version, but if we're all honest, we would probably say the same thing. This is how we see ourselves in relation to this scripture. All right. When he said, cast your care upon me for I, for I, I, I care for you. Uh, we see that and we picture this. All right. Land them at the feet of Jesus and then walking out and leaving them with him. But after looking at this scripture more closely. All right. I am under the understanding that this is not all what this is not at all what the Lord had in mind when he had when he had this scripture written. OK, so. With that being said, let's look at what the definition of casting is. Uh, it had a lot of definitions, but one of them that I, out of the dictionary says, the act or skill of throwing. All right, casting, the act or skill of throwing. The strong concordance for this particular verse, it says to throw upon. All right, to throw up on. Um, so when Jesus is talking, all right, or not when he's talking, I'm sorry, when this scripture is being written and Peter's writing this, he said, humble yourselves on the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. All right. And he said, cast all your care of him for he careth for you. All right. So if, if you think about that and ask, why is that important? Jesus is uh, through Peter is saying, humble yourself under my hand. And when you humble yourself under my hand, I will exalt you. In due time. But here's the catch. Before he does that, you have to throw your cares. All right. Um, your worries, your uncertainty. You have to throw them up on him because you cannot be exalted or elevated, elevated if you're weighed down with things that cannot that you cannot control anyway. All right. That's why this scripture is important. We said casting all your care upon me for I, I care for you. You know, we have to we have to look at that where we have to not just place our cares and our worries at the feet of Jesus. That's not what he said. He said, throw them. That, that's with force. That's what, you know, get them out of your hand. Get them off of you. Give them to Jesus. And that's what he's saying. He said, throw those cares up on me. All right. So let me give you a word picture to, to, uh, to add with that. Have you ever seen a hot air balloon take off? All right. When you picture that hot air balloon, it's tied to stakes on the ground. It, it, they do that to keep the hot air balloon from flying away. All right. So I don't care how it tries to take flight. It will stay grounded because it is, it is tied or it is weighted down. But here's the catch. When the ropes are cut and nothing else is weighing it down, then it rises and it takes flight. All right. So that's in the physical. But when we apply it to the spiritual, it is the same concept. If we are weighed down by life, then no matter how hard we try to rise, we will only go so far before we are pulled back to the reality. But when we turn it over to Jesus, then he will carry the burden and we can rise. We can rise then because nothing is holding us down. Nothing is is is, is got, got us tied down. We've cast everything. Everything off of us and now we can rise it's our due season so Jesus saying I'm going to exalt you in due season but before I exalt you I want you to throw those cares on me don't just lay them down don't just passively bring them uh, to me but I want you to with force I want you to throw them off of me I mean throw them off of you onto me all right our lives are filled with anxieties we can we can uh, debate that back and forth. We can say no, mine is not. But reality is, our lives are filled with anxiety. A, it could be a frightening uh, diagnosis. It could be a financial setback. It could be a deadline that you just have to meet and you don't think you're going to meet. It could be the, the relationship that just can't be repaired. It could be the, the global pandemic that we went through just there. It could be possibility after possibility. It could be endless. But the result is the same. Stress, worry, cares, anxiety can overtake you and it can literally paralyze your life. I think that's why Jesus had that written. He said it will paralyze your life. Don't 
get caught up in what's going on because you can't solve it anyway. But when you give it to me, all right. And so I want to tell somebody, the Lord is saying tonight, before life challenges get to the point where you are mentally, physically, and emotionally paralyzed, he said, throw it on me. Throw your cares on me. Throw your anxieties on me. Throw your worries up on me. I can, he said, heaven is, is, is his throne and earth is his footstool. So that gives us a picture that his shoulders are wide enough to carry the loads that we are not meant to carry. We get burdened down with cares. We get burdened down with things because we was not meant to carry those loads. We was not meant to carry that weight. That's why Jesus has broad shoulders. He can carry every single person's weight and still not be weighed down. So that's why he admonished us. Cast them off. Throw them off of you. Don't put them on your shoulder because you can't carry them. You're going to be paralyzed with fear. You're going to be paralyzed with the burden if you try to handle something that you was not meant to handle. So when we talk about worry. All right. Let's, let's narrow that down. The English word for worry comes from an old Anglo-Saxon word meaning to strangle, all right? Worry means to strangle, all right? Keep that in mind. And that's ex precisely what happens when we stress, when we, when we care about things that we can't handle, when we worry and anxiety, when they take control of us, they can strangle us because we are worrying and it, it, it strangles us to the point where it, it, it paralyzes us with fear. And, and, and Jesus said, that's not where you need to be. That's not where I want you. I want you to give that to me. Let me carry it. And then you are able to live the life that I've laid out for you. That doesn't mean, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean you won't go through some things sometimes. That doesn't mean that you won't worry sometimes. But if it got you to the point where it's paralyzed with fear and anxiety and stress and, 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 and lack of self-control, then you are trying to do what God can be the only person to do. And that's where uh, Jesus said, I don't want you to go there. So Matthew 11, 28 and 30. Matthew 11, 28 and 30 says, come unto me, A-L-L, -L, all. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And we said, you come unto me, he said, and I will give you rest. So you have to come unto him and then he will give you rest. Or you bring those birds to him and cast them to him or throw them uh Unto him, and then he will give you rest. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I want us to understand that God never promised, uh, he, he never promised. And he never promises to fix or remove all of our concerns all the time. He does not do that. Instead, he gives us assurance in knowing that he cares for us, which is why we can cast our cares upon him. He is the almighty God and nothing is too hard for him. All right. The American Institute of Stress uh, uh, said in their research that 75 to 90 percent of all visits to a primary care physician office are related to stress. Wow. 75 to 90 percent is related to stress. And Jesus told us, don't don't put yourself in that situation. Don't get the point where you're stressed and paralyzed. Cast it up on me. When we worry, this is Croft Pence said this. He said, when we worry, we believe more in our problems than in God's promises. Let me say that again. Croft Pence says, when we worry, you and I, when we worry, we believe more in our problems than in God's promises. All right. That sounds to me like a lack of faith. All right. He's saying you believe you believe more in what you're going through than you do in the one that can carry you through it. So cast all your cares up on him. This means you need to give up trying to take care of yourself. You must surrender completely to him, then turn your life over to him, give him yourself, all of you, all that you have, give it to Jesus, and trust the Lord with the entire care and keeping of your life. 
And when you do that, then God will do the rest. The God who created all things can certainly take care of you. And he can certainly take care of me. When he gives us an invitation to cast our cares upon him, he said that for a reason. Be because he knows that this frail body, he made it. He knows that this frail body can't carry the weight of the things that we go through. David had the understanding in his mind when he wrote Psalms 23. He said, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. He made it personal. He didn't say, it's, it's our, he didn't say the Lord is our shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. So he, he personalized it. So what's a shepherd? A shepherd is a caretaker. So he he takes care of the sheep, whether it's rain, uh, snow, sun, sleep, it doesn't matter. The shepherd is out with the sheep. He's their caretaker. He is with them through the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the Lord Jesus has come to be your caretaker. He's come to be my caretaker. So he wants us to trust in him to take care of us. Through the rain, when it's raining uh, physically, and spiritually, when it's raining, he's there to protect us. When the sun and everything is great, he's there to protect us. When it's snow and frost and cold uh, outside, when 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 life throw you a curveball, he said, "I am there to care for you." But you have to put your trust in me. All right. Many times, we we carry burdens that are too heavy for us, and they hinder us from living joyful lives. It's not that things around us is not fun. It's not that things around us are not joyous. It's not that we cannot enjoy ourselves. But when you're carrying uh, burdens that you're not meant to carry, when you're worrying about things that you cannot change, when, when you're going through things like that, and we try to carry that, it hinder us from living a joyful life. The worries we have concerning our lives and the uncertainty we face can deprive us of the peace that we are supposed to enjoy in Him. And we're wondering why we don't have joy, we under, un, why we don't have peace. Well, if you're in that situation tonight, I don't have joy and I don't have peace, I want you to think about what are you carrying around? What burden are you carrying around? What cares are you carrying around that you are not meant to carry? And you're more focused on on the burden, you more focus on the care than you are of the one that's able to take care of. You don't have the joy in your life because you are focused on the wrong thing. Think about that. John 14 and 27 said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So if we are carrying things that we're not meant to carry, and we're focused on things that we're not meant to focus on, and we don't have joy in our life, we don't have peace in our life, then it's kind of hard to experience the full presence of the Lord, if you understand. So he said, I don't want you, I don't want that kind of peace, the worldly kind of peace. That's not what I want you to have. I want you to have the peace that I give on you. Because the peace I give on you passes all understanding. The peace that I give you is joy unspeakable and is full of glory. So we have to understand that when we when we get into that rut, and we all get into it, we all go through it sometime. Just step back sometime and, and just ask yourself, what am I focused on? Am I focused on the right thing? Am I focused on Jesus? Am I fo focused on, on, on him taking care of it? Or am I trying to be the Jesus of my life and take care of it myself? Those are questions. Those are the hard questions that we have to both ask ourselves and we have to answer ourselves. All right. So who do we cast our care on? We cast it up on Jesus. All right. You can let me tell you, you cannot have peace if you are troubled and perplexed on every side. It's impossible to have the peace. It's impossible to enjoy life. It's impossible to, to uh, have that kind of joy that Jesus is talking about if you're forever troubled and perplexed on every time. If you wake up in the morning and you're worried about the day, and you go to, through the day and you're worried about it, and you come home at night and you're worried about it, you're worried about X and you're worried about Y and you're worried about Z, then when you look around, your joy is gone. Your peace is gone. Your sanctity is gone. 
All right. But Jesus said, that's not what I want you. I don't want you to focus on that. I want you to focus on me. And the way you focus on me is cast your cares upon me. The Lord want us to throw, not to lay them down, not to drag them in, not to passively place them and carefully lay them down. No, he want us to throw our cares upon him. He want to thrust them upon him. It is in then and only then can we experience the peace that he is talking about. Because we'll experience that peace because we're knowing that the creator of all things is working on our behalf. I don't know about you, but just thinking about that brings me peace. All right. That brings me peace. I can't do it all. You can't do it all. Some things, you know, we, we, we're human. We're people. We're going to think about things. We're going to, and I'm going to say it, we're going to worry about some things sometimes. But there's a difference between thinking about it and worrying about it and letting it consume us to the point where we are paralyzed mentally, physically, socially, and emotionally. When we get to that point, then we have taken we've taken it out of Jesus' hand. We've taken it uh, off of the altar and we brought it back and we're saying, I can handle this. I got this. And when we say that to, to Jesus, he takes his hand off of it because he is he, he's a gentleman. I know you've heard that phrase before. He's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself upon you. He's not going to force you to let him move in your life. But when you're ready for him to move and you're ready for him to be Lord of your life, when you're ready for him to be Jesus Almighty in your life and then you throw or you cast your cares up on him then he with the broad shoulders will carry our burden and we will feel the lightness because we don't have the burden in our life and then that's when that joy come back because we don't have to worry about things that we cannot handle so as I prepare to close tonight I said all that to say this Sometimes we have to go back and reevaluate our life. We have to go back and reevaluate, you know, what we're doing in life and 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 how we're responding to God. How we're responding to the Word of God. Are we reading it, or we are hearers, or we doers? You know, you know wh what are we? And when we read the that verse that I read to, um, I'm reading back to you again. When we go back and read First uh, Peter five and six and seven, we understand Jesus said, "Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God." So God has a mighty hand, and He said, "In due time, if you humble yourself in due time, I'm going to exalt you." But in the meantime, church. Cast all your cares upon him. Why? Because God cares for you. I want you to know that God has a has a, a plan for each and every one of our lives. Some things uh, we've carried too long. Some things we worried about too long. Some things we fretted about too long. It's time to cast those upon Jesus. It's time to cast those uh, and let him carry them on his shoulders and get them off our shoulders. I guarantee you, when you do that and you truly give it to him, you will experience the peace that passes all understanding that Jesus talks about. I want you to know that we love you here at Change Christian Center. We love uh, uh, discussing the word of God with you. We love seeing the growth. We love interacting with you. We just ask you to continue uh, to pray for us, continue to lift us up in prayer, uh, continue to pray for Change Christian Center here in the, in, uh, in the River Region. we just looking for God to do awesome and mighty things. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being a part of Change Christian Center. We'll see you this coming Sunday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time uh, for the Word. And I want to tell you that we appreciate you. We love you. God bless you. And may God keep you.